The Sinking City is the worst game I've ever, um, liked? Is the word? Is it? Is liked the right word for this? I guess it is, because I have been playing it a lot. I was up late last night playing it, I feel bloody shattered this morning, and it's because I was playing this and, and sort of didn't want to stop. But, don't get me wrong, this is not a game I could recommend in good faith to anyone. It's broken. Not necessarily game-breakingly broken, but consistently, oddly broken. Visually, it's a mess. There's slowdown, there's pop-in, there's uh, NPCs doing all sorts of strange things. Uh, the combat is weak. The gameplay structure is contrived and convoluted and in many ways completely wastes my time. This game commits so many sins that I have pilloried other games for and yet found myself tolerating here. Not forgiving, never forgiving, but tolerating. I can actually grip my teeth and bear with this game's endless stream of bullshit because there's something in it. And very much like a figure from the Cthulhu Mythos, I can't necessarily tell you what it is I like about it. I can't necessarily describe that. It is itself an eldritch property, the enjoyment that I have found from this game. Uh, but let me, I guess let's explain a little bit about what the Sinking City is, or to give it a more appropriate name, the Sinking Shitty, which again, I'm not saying it's necessarily a mark of me ha not having had fun with the game. But anyway, The Sinking Shitty. It's uh, very much a, a Lovecraft-inspired game. It's knee-deep in the mythos. Uh, very knee-deep. In fact, so knee-deep that it even goes so far as to somewhat address uh, Lovecraft's racist overtones uh, that, that often permeates his work. I've made jokes before when I last uh, covered a Cthulhu-themed game. I made a joke about how you've always got to bring up uh, Lovecraft's racism, it's an obligatory talking point. Uh, the, the two, his, his work and his beliefs are often um, very closely intertwined. And I've made cracks about how, you know, you have to bring it up before, but this game right off the bat addresses it. Uh, and, and to be honest, when the game started with a warning that, and I'm paraphrasing, says, there was well bad racism in ye oldie days and we will present some of it, not that we agree with it. I was clenching my anus and bracing myself for something awkward and bad, but so far, and, and I've not gotten mega far into it, I've played it quite extensively throughout uh, yesterday, but so far it's not terribly done, and, and the writing is mm, good sometimes. It's good sometimes. The dialogue and voice acting is a mixed bag, sometimes it's well put together, sometimes the performances are a little flat, but there's a lot of good mystery there, and more to the point, the lore is, is really well presented, the, you can find a lot of documents that relay some of the backstory, and some of those are evocatively written, wonderfully written. Wait, 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 hold on. This changes everything. So let's talk about how the game plays. We'll start with combat since we're at a combat sequence. Uh, it's rubbish because this game is rubbish. This game is really rubbish. Uh, combat is annoying. Enemies are a pain in the ass to fight. They sidestep all the time and you barely get any ammunition to fight them with. 
Finding and crafting ammunition, there's a crafting system, of course there is, that's not necessarily the problem. The problem is, is that no matter how much you craft, you have strict limits on what you can carry. The guns have very limited capacity, and you've got a limited carrying capacity for materials. So, whether or not you can get what you need to fight, you can never carry enough for a sustained battle, and every single fight will drain you of resources. Now, that seems to be a deliberate conceit of the game, and that would be fine if not for the fact that enemies will frequently pop up when you really don't need them to, and when you're trying to do investigations and when you need to go uh, to certain um, obligatory places. Uh, I would really have liked the ammo cap to be vastly improved. But like I say, it's not a matter of finding stuff. They could have made your resources a bit scarcer, but because this game is rubbish and somewhat broken, if you keep leaving buildings and going back in, all of the items will reset and respawn and reconfigure themselves. So you leave a place, you go back into it, and all of the lockers and boxes you looked in will have had their item pool regenerated. And and it, the, the drops inside will be random, but you do it enough times and it will not take long. Then you can max out your ammunition and your, uh, your traps and your weapons like bombs and whatnot um, after every single encounter, which you will need to because like I say, you can never carry enough, even with upgrades. Uh, so that's combat. It's at its core, typical third person shooting, but, but rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a melee attack you can use, but it's so ineffective. It's awful, and you can barely target anything with it, and the little enemies will skitter around you. So trying to hit them is like playing whack-a-mole. Um, but that's not the core focus of the game, even though there's more combat than there should be, given how restricted it is. Uh, you are a private detective uh, trying to discover what went on in Oakman, and you do a lot of investigation. And there's a lot of detective vision, they call it mind's eye here, where you walk around looking for clues and trying to piece together what happened, like we're seeing here. And that's all fine. That's all dandy. Uh, it's fairly simple. It looks more complicated than it actually is. Uh, run around, pick things up. Um, look at a sequence of events and then put the right order that those events happen in, which normally just means going from point A to point B. Um, that's all cool. Uh, but where the game really trips itself up is in how it is. It's many games these days are obsessed with the idea of hand holding and not wanting to hold anyone's hands. And there's a fine line between not wanting to hold hands and just annoying the player by shoving content at them and saying, fuck you, you figure it out. And this game does that to an inconvenient degree. For example, there are no map markers in general that you don't put down yourself. You are not given um, objective markers necessarily. You're given addresses. Now, because this game is this game, there are no numbered addresses. According to the game, the people of the city uh, know their way around town and don't care about outsiders. Okay, cool. That's an interesting conceit. But in practice, you're constantly given addresses for where to go next, which will be something like, I don't know, on the corner of Whisper Street and Cthulhu Lane. And you've got to go to that. You, you go to the intersection um, and then just find the right door. And you've got to do this constantly. You have to go into your map, cross-reference the roads, scour the right, like scour the map to find where you've got to go next, then mark it yourself, and then go there. And then when you get there, look around for the right door. There are markings on doors to let you know uh, which ones you can go in, but some of them are not well placed and not well, not not very. Uh, clearly presented, so you can wander about a bit. Not for a long time, you won't necessarily get completely lost, but there's just a lot of unnecessary steps. The game did not need me to have to constantly cross-reference the map, especially because, as this game is fairly broken, when you hit the map button, it can sometimes take up to several seconds, maybe even longer, for the map to actually get around to friggin' loading. So that's its own problem. Um, it's cute the first few times you do it. You think to yourself, oh, this is cool. They give you actual addresses, and then I've got to go in the map and find the addresses. That's neat. And it was neat for five minutes. But when you get hours in, you're just, you're, you're over it. 
you get over it quick. But sometimes the investigation is fun. Uh, there are archives dotted around the city, found in police departments, hospitals, places like that. And you're given a number of clues to work with, so you can go to those archives and cross-reference under certain headings. Like, you go to the hospital and you can look up patients and dates, and what kind of treatment the patient looked for, and you can guess which of those headings you need based on the clues you have, the various documents that you find. And that's kind of cool, that, that's investigative. As is going into your mind palace, and yes they call it that, you go into your mind palace to look up the various clues you've found so far and mix and match them and pop them together, and when you put the right combination of clues together, you get um, a deduction or, or a, a clearer idea of where to go next. So why do I claim to like a game I've just spent the last 10 minutes completely crapping all over? I, I think in part it's because they so clearly tried. They so clearly tried to make the best game they could make. And that sincerity absolutely seeps from every single pore this game has. It's earnest, it's sincere, it's authentic, in it's, it's well-meaning, <laughs> and that sounds so patronising, but it's well-meaning, and it, it has such a charm in that regard that I can't help but root for it a little bit, even as I roll my eyes at, at every time the map takes several seconds to load, or I'm given a vague address and I'm left to piece it out in a way that isn't fun, because I've had to do that for every single address, and it's gotten on my nerves. I still enjoy the game, even as the weird little crab monster sidesteps again, and I waste another precious bullet because I can only carry about 30 at best. And there are things to genuinely like about it. As I say, the story is uh, it is mysterious in a good way. There's a lot to uncover. Uh, there are elements that make you... It really puts you into the shoes of, a, of an old-timey private detective. Uh, it's got a, a, a noir sense to it, uh, as well as the mythos and, and everything else. And there's a, a real atmosphere to it. it. As visually ugly as it can be, and as, as weird as it can look, and, and as glitchy as some of the animations and visuals are, it's nonetheless got a moody, creepy sense of dread that I appreciate. And because it commits so strongly to Lovecraft's work, I do find it one of the more evocative uh, Lovecraftian games you could find. It's a game that knows exactly what it wants to do, and while it doesn't do much of it necessarily well, it does it with gusto and pluck. And lordy lord knows we could do with more plucky, more downright plucky games. And that's why The Sinking City is one of the worst games I've ever liked.